Hello, it's Scott Manley here. There is concerns up in the International Space Station as a visiting Soyuz spacecraft has sprung a leak in its coolant system and is spraying material rather elegantly and beautifully into space. Unfortunately, this means that we are going to have some concerns over the space worthiness of that Soyuz. Whether it will be able to return to Earth on, with crew on board or will have to be disposed of, whether the crew will make a rush back to Earth before the spacecraft gets worse, or whether they will uh, wait for a replacement Soyuz to get sent up automatically to give them a ride home. It's not clear what's happening, but the situation is definitely developing. So this is the Soyuz MS-22. It was launched back in September with three crew on board. There was the Roscosmos cosmonauts, um, Sergei Prokopviev and Dmitry Petalin and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio. And so, yeah, the Russian crew, they have been looking at you know, bringing the new Nauka science module online with a number of EVAs. They recently got the European robotic arm working and now they were going to move a radiator from the Rasvet module over to the Naoka module. So the Rasvet module is actually where Soyuz MS-22 is docked to. This was a small module that was launched in the payload bay of the space shuttle back in 2010, and it included a couple of parts that were expected to be fitted to Naoka once it reached space. So there's like a radiator on the side, there's a little airlock. This was back when they expected the science module to be launched in 2012. It took almost a decade longer. So the fact that they're having to delay an EVA to fix this probably isn't such a big deal as far as the radiator is concerned. But we are concerned about the fact that we can very visibly see liquid, tiny droplets floating away into space. And you know what? It could be considered quite pretty. I mean, I believe it was Rusty Schweikart in Apollo 9 who commented that a well-timed urine dump under perfect lighting conditions is one of the most beautiful things he'd ever seen. So, yeah, we have, we don't know exactly what's going on here. Uh, we're not even sure what is leaking from the cooling system. My documentation suggests that, well, at least 30 years ago, Soyuz was using ethylene glycol mixed with water in their cooling systems, but this was also in an article which was talking about how NASA had some concerns about integrating this with the station. So while they definitely have used this in the past, it's possible they have changed formulation at some point in the, the intervening years. Um, nevertheless, a small leak in this system um, will produce tiny droplets expanding into space, it's very concerning about what those droplets do. They could contaminate certain scientific instruments on the International Space Station. The crew on board has been trying to get good pictures of this, but they've been specifically instructed not to open certain window shutters in case the material coming out contaminates the surface and, say, you know, ru ruins its ability to do certain kinds of research or science. So... On the Soyuz, as far as we can tell, the leak is coming from the back of the Soyuz, sort of on top of it. So the, the periscope sticks out from the bottom of the Soyuz, and there's three modules. There's the uh, orbit module at the front, where the crew can sort of hang out if they're spending time on sp in orbit. There's the descent module in the middle, which basically returns to Earth. And then there's the instrument module at the back, and that is where the engines are, the power, the solar panels, and the cooling system. Now, there's two coolant loops. One uh, is for the cabin to keep the people, like, you know, at a reasonable temperature. The second loop is for the electronics, which are inside the service module. And these both run through a system of heat exchangers and then run across the surface of the back of the Soyuz. So a lot of Soyuz is covered in blankets, but right at the very bottom, you'll notice the blankets disappear. And if you look very carefully, you can see these sort of circular ribs or ridges where the cooling material, the cooling fluid, is being pumped around so that it can radiate heat into space. So yeah, it's natural to presume that the leak is coming from here. Now, if the cooling system isn't going to operate, that does call into question the space worthiness of the Soyuz. Now, 
uh, during the re-entry process or during the return to Earth process, it has to maneuver, fire its engines and then separate both the orbit module and the instrument module. At that point, the descent module doesn't actually interface with the cooling loops on the service module. So it definitely doesn't need it for actually descending and falling through the atmosphere. It's able to survive on its own for that. But the cooling system is definitely going to be needed for those electronics for the fuel systems, for the valves. And that could mean that this spacecraft is not sufficiently safe. They, they, couldn't be able, they may not be able to guarantee that it can perform a deorbit. Um, the leak rate, we don't know how fast that is, how quickly it is um, you know, losing fluid. It could be that they can survive for several days before the fluid levels get too low. And that might, might then imply that they could choose to go with a fast return. And given the fact that they've basically sent the crew to, to sleep, probably means that they're not considering that. But you know, we'll find out in a couple of days. Uh, it, alternatively, if they decide the spacecraft is not spaceworthy, they could send up a replacement Soyuz automated and dock it to the station and have the crew use that as their return vehicle. And then the one which was, you know, MS-22 could return to Earth on its own. Maybe, you know, maybe they maybe they put some cargo in it. Because you know what? Down mass is uh, something that Russia doesn't have a great deal of. So uh, the other question is, what caused this? Well, okay, we don't know. Because we can't, haven't even seen any images of where it is. First of all, it's in space. There's space debris flying around all the time. It could be that this is just a micrometeorite or tiny piece of orbital debris which has hit the Soyuz and pierced the cooling system and that's what we see that's why we see stuff leaking out. Alternatively it was pointed out that we are in a period of high beta angle. What does that mean? It means that because it's winter and the sun is a long way south on and the alignment of the orbit is sort of aligned with this it means that the space station is basically in permanent sunlight for the last few days. So after a few days of being in permanent heat of the sun, the cooling system on a spacecraft sprouts a leak. That does sound like it could be correlated, but we won't honestly know. Of course, if Dmitry Rogozin was in charge, he would try to blame it on some drunken astronaut because that's what Dmitry does. So look, first and foremost, we want to be concerned about the crew on board. Make sure that they have the, you know, the return capabilities they need. Make sure that there is no danger. Secondly, we really need to be, need to be concerned about the effects of this on scientific instruments on the space station. This material shooting out, it's going to be sticking to things and it may change something, right? That could definitely be problematic. But right now, we don't really have enough information to know what's going to happen but I will certainly be paying attention and keeping you updated on the things. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.